Hey, Phil Play from Babastronomy.com doing another Q&BA chat session. I got a great question from Jeff Grams on Google Plus who asks, I'd like to ask about the effect of the minus 273 degree cold in space on a body without a spacesuit. Does the heat need to leave your body into something? In what way would it be different to a severe cold burn received here on Earth? This is a great question. You get this a lot, especially uh, since movies show astronauts sometimes, like, like the movie Outland and there are a few others. I think Mission to Mars did this, where somebody opens up their spacesuit when they're out in space, and then something horrifying happens. In, in Outland, uh, they would explode, literally, and you'd see what looked like somebody throwing pizza sauce inside of the spacesuit. It was nasty. In uh, Mission to Mars, a um, uh, guy opens up his spacesuit helmet, and he freezes instantly. You know, would these things happen? In a word, no, that wouldn't happen. First of all, you wouldn't explode, right? Um, it, you, when you climb to the top of a mountain, you don't explode. It doesn't work that way. Um, if you were to, say, go out into space in your spacesuit, and you were out, I don't know, far away from the sun, where it's really cold, and you open up your, your visor, what's going to happen? Well, all the air is going to rush out of your suit, and you're going to decompress. And that's really awful. It's a, it's a terrible feeling. You'll get the bends. Um, your blood won't boil. This is another thing people think. The blood won't boil because your blood is encased in all your veins and arteries. It's a closed system. And so uh, even though at, uh, like water, for example, will boil at lower temperatures if the air pressure is lowered. Where I live in Boulder, water boils at less than 100 degrees centigrade, uh, or Celsius, I suppose, is the correct unit, less than, than, than 212 Fahrenheit because we have a lower air pressure here. So you might say, oh, if you go out in the vacuum of space where there's no air pressure, maybe your blood will boil. But it won't because it's all contained. It's, it's in an airtight unit, your circulatory system. But things will happen. You will erupt out all of the air in your, in your lungs will come out of your mouth. Uh, all the air in your intestines, in your lower tract, will find a different escape route, for example. I'll, I'll leave that to your imagination. Um, the fluids in your mouth, your saliva and all of that, Will, um, will, will come out of your soft tissues, for example, around your lips and your tongue. That will be drawn out, so you'll get very dry cracking in there, but that's the least of your worries because basically you're going to black out within a few seconds without any air. Um, there are all sorts of horrifying effects that happen then. This has been studied because uh, there have been accidents. For example, uh, a Russian cosmonaut was in a, a, a barometric chamber where they uh, let all the air out by accident, and they were able, uh, it was some time before they could get it back up and they were able to study what happened to them. And there, there are spasms that happen and, and seizures and, and, and go into a coma. And it, it, your, the, the, the blood vessels in your eyes will burst because those are near the surface and they, they will feel that difference in pressure. It's really, really horrible. Um, but the question here specifically is about the cold. What happens with the cold, right? Well, here on Earth, if I grab an ice cube, right, I can feel that cold and, and the heat from my hand transfers through touch into that ice cube. That's called conducting. The heat from my hand is conducted into that ice cube. You can think of it as the cold being conducted from the ice cube to your hand. That's not the way we do it. That's, that's, if you work out the math, if you do the physics and math of it, that's a perfectly acceptable way to do it. But a better way to think of it is that heat goes from a hotter source to a colder source. So your hand's heat gets lost, conducted into that ice cube. The same thing with air. Okay, our, body, our bodies are at a temperature of about 37 degrees Celsius, and the air around me is at about 20, 22 degrees Celsius. I am conducting that heat into the air around me. But it turns out um, that's a relatively efficient process, but it depends on the densities, in, in one sense, of the two objects. Ice is dense, my hand is dense, so when I hold on to an ice cube, I'm really conducting that heat very rapidly, and so I can really feel that. If the air were as cold as that ice cube, the conduction between my, my skin and the air around me is not as efficient because the air is much lower density than the ice cube. And that's why ice feels colder at, say, zero degrees Celsius than air at zero degrees Celsius. It's the same reason you can imagine when you stick your hand in a hot oven. Imagine you're baking a cake at, um, I, I, let's just say, 350 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know what that would be centigrade. Baking still in America still uses uh, imperial units. If you've got a, can, a, a pan with a cake in it, uh, and it's at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, when you reach your hands into the oven, 
right? The air feels hot, but you can take it. You could take it for several seconds, maybe even tens of seconds. The instant you touch that pan with the cake in it, you're going to get horribly burned because the metal in that pan is, is solid and dense and can conduct that heat into your hands very rapidly, whereas uh, the air does not. That's the difference between temperature and heat. Something can be at a very high temperature but not feel that hot because it's not good at conducting that heat. Well, out in the vacuum of space, this is turning into a long answer, but it's, you know, there's a lot going on. Out in the vacuum of space, there's no air. So there's no way to conduct your heat from your body out into space. So there's no way to get rid of your, your, your heat that efficiently. Now, there's, there's another way to get rid of heat. There are actually three ways of, of moving heat around. There's conduction, like I said. There's convection, where something hot will rise up. Like if you heat up a balloon, it will rise up through the air. When you heat water in a, in a pot, that hot water rises up from the bottom of the pot to the top and cools off and sinks back down. That process circulating uh, a, a fluid that way is called convection. Uh, the third one is radiation, to literally radiate away heat. Now, your body is radiating away heat as well. As I'm sitting here again, my body temperature is higher than the air around me. I'm radiating away heat. But that's an incredibly inefficient process. It's much lower efficiency than the other two. Given the chance, the other two will dominate. But out in space, right, you can't conduct away that heat. You can't convect away that heat. There's nothing to convect around you. There's no air. So you're forced, your body is forced to radiate away that heat. And that's a very, very, very slow process. So you will eventually freeze solid. But it won't happen in, you know, a split second like it did in Mission to Mars. It will take hours. Now, you will feel very cold if you could survive somehow, if you had maybe an air supply, but you didn't have your pressure suit and, you, you know, your ears weren't burst and your eyes weren't bloodshot and you weren't belching and out other ends and all that. Um, uh, you would very slowly freeze to death, but it would not be instantaneous. And, in fact, what would happen is you wouldn't, you probably wouldn't uh, uh, turn into like a big popsicle, a corpsicle. Um, you would probably freeze dry because the air and the liquid would be leaving your body. The, the, the liquid in your, you know, you're mostly water, right? That liquid would be coming out of your, your orifices. It would evaporate away as well as getting very, very, very cold. So probably uh, you would look like a, a mummy. <laughs> you would sort of freeze dry. It would be really nasty. Um, so there you go. Uh, an unpleasant topic, although it's kind of cool to think about. Um, I really wish Hollywood would get this right. And in fact, a long time ago, uh, I was asked by a writer about how this would work. And I was hoping that was going to get made into a, into a program. It never did. But one of these days. It would be an interesting murder mystery, I think, to have something like that. So there you go. So uh, I guess to wrap that up, my advice would be, if you're in space, in your space suit, Keep your visor closed. <laughs>